Thank you all for tuning in to our team call tonight. My name is Brigitte Lindford, and I am so excited to kind of just get us started off here and introduce our speakers for tonight because we are in for a treat. I will tell you these two ladies that are hosting our call for tonight have done something that I have never done. And that is that they have attended the new leadership conference that Beachbody puts on every year. And this is a relatively new event that they started doing and um, I'm totally, totally jealous <laughs> because it's something that I wish was um, something that I could have attended when I was pushing for one star. Um, but it is something that you earn an invite to by advancing your team to one star. So you kind of get the invite at the end of the calendar year and you have to have so many elite points as well, which means you're really working with your new coaches, you are actively building, you're actively recruiting and attaining success club yourself and setting that standard and teaching others how to do that as well. And there's several coaches from our team actually who earned an invite to that event, which I think is just phenomenal. And we have such a strong team. Um, but I kind of got to know both of these ladies. I felt kind of well as they were really pushing to make this happen. And I know that they really hustled and that it was something that they really worked together on. Um, and so I thought it would be a special thing for them to come back and share what their experience was. And so the two ladies that I'm speaking of are Samantha Rosenthal and Brenna Novello. And Samantha sponsored Brenna. I know that they work very much as success partners though. Um, but I am just so excited to have them on. And so I will go ahead and unmute both of them and let them kind of take it from here. I'm starting. Brenda and I just kind of collaborated about how we, you know, wanted to co-host the call. So we're going to give you like our tangible takeaways, like things like action steps that we got that we thought were really uh, powerful. But also we're going to share a lot of the feels because I think a lot of these events are kind of the feeling you leave with, not, I mean, it is the tangible takeaways, but I mean, when you feel pumped up, you're way more likely to do stuff. So Oh, that's a big version of me. Now I'm big. So um, I'm just going to start with sharing who I am. Um, and then Brenda will do the same. Um, after I just kind of share my takeaways. And then we'll end the call with the emotional feely stuff. So I'm Samantha Rosenthal. And um, I am a mom of three. I'm a special ed teacher and a wife. And um, I guess like my brand thingy, if I had one, would be that I... I like kind of call myself the hotness express, but more just that like life is really chaotic for me. I have three kids under the age of four and in my time as a coach, we've moved cross country three times. So it's been a really big couple of years. Um, but I have loved the craziness because it has allowed me to continuous as a coach. It has continuously allowed me to focus on myself and being the best mom and the best wife and the best new employee in multiple states and, and things like that. So, um, but my story is kind of how I found Beach Beachbody. I just feel like we should share our story so you know who like you're talking to. <laughs> um, but I kind of struggled my whole life with lots of different types of things. Um, my mom struggled with addiction. And um, so I use that word struggle, like we just kind of struggled, you know, it wasn't necessarily that I struggled with eating or I struggled with my weight or things like that, but I um, just kind of always knew that I wanted to share my story and the things that I had been through, but I didn't know what that would ever entail. I just kind of figured I would like write a book one day. I used to joke like, this will be a great chapter in my book. This will be a great chapter because some of the things that were happening were just kind of comical. It was easier to laugh. So, um, you know, I became an adult and I moved out and I got married and I was doing all the, the good things. I became a special ed teacher. I got my, my dream job as a, I'm going to shut the door. I think my husband forgot that I'm doing a call. Um, but I got my dream job as a special ed um, teacher for kiddos with autism. 
and yeah, my husband's like laughing really hysterical downstairs. Um, and then I got pregnant my second year teaching with my son. And as somebody who didn't grow up like eating really great, I always say when your mom is worried about staying sober, she's not really making sure that you have like the colors of the rainbow on your plate. Um, I didn't know how to eat healthy. And so I hit the drive through all the time. And for sure, when I was pregnant, I was like, yay, an excuse to eat whatever I wanted. So I gained 50 pounds um, with my first pregnancy. And I found Beachbody because I wanted to lose the weight. Um, and I was like the easiest challenge pack sale there ever was. I, I don't even like to say that because I know I'm not the norm. And going from hitting the drive through four to five times a week to 100% all in to 21 day fix. So clean eating and I like measured all my food and I did all the things and I had this incredible transformation. And then my coach posted that she was home with her baby or babies and um, that she you know, was able to work this business while being home with them and like what, what that was a, such a blessing to her. And I was about to return to work after, on maternity leave. And I was like, oh my gosh, like maybe this is it. I have no problem telling everyone what I'm doing because I felt so amazing. So I signed up as a coach and I really caught the vision pretty quick. Um, I actually remember some posts and they weren't necessarily like income numbers. It was just like the, the concept of freedom, the concept of freedom from my coach. And then I started following Brigida, who is our upline. Um, and like, I just caught this vision of freedom and choice, uh, the choice to work or to not work. And I think that that's a really powerful thing. I don't think there's a right way or a wrong way to be a mom, but I think it's powerful to have the choice what you're going to do. So, um, basically, so I started coaching in 2015 and I understood where it could go, but I didn't go all in because I think I had a lot of fear or I know I had a lot of fear that if I go all in and this doesn't work, like I would be so devastated in myself. So, but one thing I did do from day one is I shared my journey on social media. I did my workout. Um, I, you know, drank the shake. I've done my personal development. I've listened to the national wake up call. I've done team calls. I've done all the things. So I kind of was just like going as a coach and then in 2017, Brenna and I went to Summit, and then our first summit, and that's when we really were like, oh, okay, like, here we go, we get it now, like, we should do this, and I should add that my coach stopped coaching. Brenna is not my originally personally sponsored coach. She signed up with our mutual friend, who is my personally sponsored coach, who is not coaching anymore. And then my coach's coach isn't working. So we kind of were just kind of on our own. And that's not that we didn't, we couldn't have leaned into our, you know, our bigger family team. Um, I think that we just didn't really know we could. Um, so if you're sitting out there listening to this call or this recording, reach out to your upline because I've never reached out to anybody, any leader on our team and have them not like met me back with such, you know, wonderful, yes, let me help you. So but we didn't do that at first. And we kind of were just struggling through what we were supposed to do. Um, you know, we didn't really know. So, but then we decided to, we, and I'm not trying to tell Brenna's story, but this is kind of where we merged. In 2018, we were like, we are, um, this will be our first year coaching because this will be the year that we actually do all the things consistently, that we invite consistently, that we do all the things consistently. And so we both are from, you know, myself, I was a lifetime diamond when I started 2018, but I um, was a paid Emerald. And then I ended the year at one star qualifying for new leader conference, which was a huge, awesome honor. Um, but I didn't really know why I wanted to go. They just said like, you should go to new leader conference. And I had been a coach for so long that I kind of had heard all the things. Um, and in 2018 was the year that I said we had just moved for the second time from Maryland to San Francisco. My husband was commuting three hours a day. Um, I found out I was pregnant with this beautiful surprise. And I was like, I'm not doing another year where I like don't make growth. 
that I'm like, I'm not going to start this year. And like, I'm not going to end this year how I'm starting. I just can't, I love this and it's great, but like, I need to see growth for myself. Um, and life really threw me a curveball with getting pregnant. I get very sick, but I was like, you know what? This is not going to be my excuse. I'm just going to do it. And so we decided, um, that we were, and like Brenda and I, as Brigitte said, we're like success partners. We, and I think a success partner, if you've ever had one, or if you're looking to have one, it's not somebody who says like, Hey, did you do your work today? It's that you say, Hey, this is what I did today. Um, a lot of times we'll message each other or box to each other. Like, this is what I'm going to do today. And then we'll give like a report back. I'm not writing down what Brenna says she's going to do. Um, it's our own personal accountability. Like we do in a challenge group. Um, it's important for, I think your business to feel like somebody is counting on you to do that. Um, maybe that's a spouse or a husband. Um, you know, I tell my husband to ask me how many success club points I have. And he like, he just doesn't really understand. So he didn't do that. So it was great when Brent and I decided to kind of collaborate and just hold each other accountable. And we were like, we're doing it. And we didn't know why we wanted to go to New Leader Conference, but we knew that it was a thing and that we should do it. And so we, we set the goal. And it's funny, if you've ever read the 12-week year, like you always like reach the goal, um, like in the final quarter. Well, we like are hustling at the, like literally to the day we were like qualifying for one star. Um, and for those of you who have not qualified or gone through qualification, you have to hold your rank for six weeks that we had never done that before. So like we're calling Brigida and we're like, um, okay, so can I just review the volume thing? Cause I get it, but now I have to like go through it. So anyways, it was really hard and Brenna will tell you, and I promise you that Brenna like hustled way harder and she made miracles happen she is amazing she is like the um like if you ever think like you can't do something like brenna literally went from emerald to one star in like six weeks so you can do it so i would challenge you if new litter conference is not on your goal board it should be on your goal board just for next february you have to qualify by the end of the year as one star but i challenge you to qualify like make sure you're qualified by summit just be one star by summit because if you are um doing the things even if you're like i don't know elite i don't understand that yet i you know i'm not sure um as long as you're doing the things you're you're pushing um, for more success club points to sign more coaches to change more lives, you will start getting those elite points and then you'll understand where they come from. But sometimes you just have to do before you know, and then it makes a lot more sense. So I really wanted to go to New Leader Conference because I was, I, there is no secret. And if you think that this call, we're going to tell you a secret, there is no, there is no secret it is the four vital behaviors consistently over time. Um, have bigger goals, do more of the vital behaviors. Um, <laughs> that's kind of it, which was a long time for me to realize that. But at the same time, I wanted to go to New Leader Conference because I wanted to have like kind of an upper level training uh, because I had been listening to the National Wake Up Call and Team Calls for so long. I wouldn't say it got boring, but I just was ready for something new. And I had no idea what that meant. So at New Leader Conference, you have the opportunity to hear from corporate and not like corporate and like this, like, oh, great, like corporate speakers, they make it so fun. So something that was so awesome is that we got like compliance training and they speak to you as a new leader. So they don't talk to you like you're a 15 star, like, hey, you got this down, like, and they're throwing things at you and you're like, I don't really know what you're talking about. And they don't talk to you like you're a brand new coach. And you have questions if you're not there yet as a diamond or if you're not one star or you're not there yet you will have these questions whenever you get to this, you know, kind of area, one star, two star kind of area. And they answer them. I didn't even know I had those questions they answered. They talked about how um, a product gets like from the idea board to, um, to like us, to our homes, how that goes about, like what the process is. They talked about, um, you know, obviously leaders in the network, top coaches spoke, um, and they talked about how they on go, um, onboard coaches and they just talked about their experiences. And so all of the trainings were so cool, but I didn't expect it, but it was really cool. And I don't know if that's helpful or if that's exciting to you, but 
just know when you go, you get this like kind of upper level training that kind of makes you feel like, oh, like I just got something special. And if you've ever been to Summit, you know, the stage is really far away, like Carl's there, but you're, you know, you're not like right there with him. Well, Carl was like right there and he's speaking so much belief into you and you're kind of like, oh my gosh, like you're right there. And it just feels, you feel very connected to the company when you leave. Um, so that was cool for me as someone who had been a coach for a long time, but really didn't step up her game until 2018. Um, to actually start making my dreams come true. You know, my goals, have them reach them. So I had been around it. So it was an awesome opportunity to hear more. Um, and now I'm going to just pass it to Brenna to talk about her tangible takeaways. Oh, <clears throat> can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. Hi guys, I'm Brenna Novello. And Sam... Gosh, listen to your story. It's like, I feel like I've heard it 5 million times and yet gets me hyped every time I hear it. Okay. So Sam's and my story is like polar opposites in so many ways. So I'm going to touch very briefly on um, my story just to share a little bit to kind of know who I am and where I come from. So um, I actually grew up as an athlete, like hardcore, wanted to play in college, um, talking to scholarship uh, coaches about scholarships, the whole night. Um, and I messed up my knee my junior year of high school and ended up going to college on a completely academic scholarship and did like a 180, like the ultimate sorority party girl. That was me. Always a good time. Part of that though, is when you go from a lifestyle where your entire life is centered around someone telling you how to work out, someone telling you how to be healthy to going to, I haven't gone to bed. It's three o'clock in the morning. I'm exhausted. I'm eating pizza every day. Your body doesn't know what to do. Um, and I've always been a super outgoing person, always um, been very curvy, always been embracing my curves. Um, and over that four years of college, there was kind of this change in me. Um, I was becoming someone I didn't recognize, not necessarily because of the weight gain. That to me felt very like kind of slow, um, but it was just, I couldn't, I didn't feel like myself. Um, I started to kind of slowly transition to this person who, what I call like wore tents, like everything I wore looked like a tent on me because I felt so uncomfortable in my own skin. And I had never had that going from, you know, somebody who worked out every day and who felt very fit on many levels. Um, but at the same time, I was always a very self-conscious person. Um, if you see my story at all, my sister and I are like, 16 months apart and supposedly identical from the neck up. And so there was always this weird comparison between the two of us. And it created this kind of underlying uh, self-esteem kind of battle that I didn't really know I had until I'd gotten older. And at that time, I started to really feel myself um, not want to be the person I always was, not want to be outgoing, not want to go out with my friends, um, or feel like I was comparing myself to every single person around me. Like, was I good enough? Was I sexy enough? Should I be here? And that is not who I wanted to be or who I thought I should be, um, but was very much who I had become. So over time, you know, I was, I'm a very driven person. <laughs> I tend to be that person, like, you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to show you that I can. So I graduated college early um, on very little sleep, on a bartender salary while working full time, going to school full time, internship full time, like, I lived on energy drinks pretty much for three and a half years, um, went right into my master's program because I was like, you know what? I need to do it the right way. I need to have a career. I need to get a degree. Um, and I want to make money. And you know, that was my goal. Fun fact, social work, not where you're going to make money. So just throwing that out there, why I never knew that I have no idea, but no one seemed to tell me that until I was already there. So long and the short of it, I go into my master's program. And I'm about a year in, living the same lifestyle, bartending full-time, in school now with a master's program, full-time, internship full-time. And it's like, I swear one day, guys, <laughs> this is a story that I tell regularly, but was really hard for me to share um, kind of when I first started coaching. But there was one day I was getting ready to go out with my friends, and I'm getting ready. And if you can picture like this huge closet with way too many clothes in it, and I looked at it and thought, I have nothing to wear. I have nothing to wear that I'm going to feel good in. And I sat on my floor and I cried like a little baby for probably 30 minutes 
sobbing over the fact that I didn't have anything that I wanted to wear or felt good in, felt good enough to wear in. So that was kind of a turning point for me. Um, Sam and I actually met randomly through a mutual friend who I worked with at the bar. Um, so no real reason to be friends except that we were both in this girl helping her with her wedding and we like had this immediate connection where I was like, she is my friend, we will be friends for life, she is hilarious, I love her, and she likes dance parties, so I was sold. So from that moment on, we had kind of built this random relationship where you just like connect with somebody. So Sam and I, of course, were friends on social media and I had seen her doing her workouts at home with her baby and I'd gone to her baby shower and I had seen her go through the whole process of her first pregnancy and afterward and, and saw her transformation. I also knew how she loved to eat fast food and knew she knew about me. I need to be able to have at least a vodka soda on the weekends with you know, my friends, and I love chocolate. I'm addicted from way back. It's genetic, not my fault. So when I started doing all these workouts and getting this amazing transformation, I reached out to her and I was like, okay, Sam, you know who I am. Like, let's not, let's not beat around the bush. Give me the real. I had also, you know, come from a background of health and fitness. I had done the gym life. I had done the counting calories. I had done the wrapping your body. I had done every diet on the market you can think of. That was me. So I was like, give me something tangible. Give me something real. Don't, don't, you know, don't mess with me. So she was like, okay, Rona, you can still have chocolate. You can still have drinks on the weekends and you work out from home 30 minutes a day. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll try it. I'll try it. So Sam actually didn't sign me up because my husband actually surprised me with my first challenge fact. I couldn't afford it. And I was saving for three months. Keep in mind, social work salary. I'm working for the state literally making negative dollars probably and he was like babe you can't stop talking about this you're driving me nuts I'm gonna buy you your first challenge back and secretly surprised me with it him and Sam were the best so I tried it I went all in 21 day fix and I lost I don't know it was like in six months I lost like 35 pounds and I literally found myself I could not believe that I had waited this long to join her um but I wasn't gonna coach I mean that was a whole other thing I was like are you kidding me? I'm working until like 11 o'clock at night on my social work job. I can't do this. Like, don't even talk to me about it. Don't even, I, it literally took me six months to sign up as a coach, guys. She asked me, brought it up, was like, you'd be great at it. I said no. So our mutual friend joined, um, who I actually brought to the boot camps, ironically. Um, I was like Sam, probably number one referral person for a solid six months. Every person I knew I was talking about it all the time. I probably lost thousands of dollars on signups. Like it was ridiculous. So our friend signed up, did a boot camp, became a coach, all this stuff. She was like, Brenna, I think you should just be my first coach. Sign up with me. I'm under Sam. We can still do the boot camps together. I was like, sold, fine. So fast forward, <clears throat> I'm signed up as a coach and I do a couple posts and people are like, oh, what are you doing? And I'm sharing and I think it's so cool. And I did that for a whole two months. And I got pregnant and literally was like, I hate everyone, don't talk to me. No joke, guys. I went through my Facebook list. I deleted everybody. If you were kind of annoying, and keep in mind, this is when politics was really extra on Facebook. So I had to like, I had to ixnay that. I couldn't handle it. I literally went from probably a thousand friends on Facebook to 200. That's not a joke. In that nine months, everyone thought I was crazy. So during my pregnancy, I stopped coaching. I was like, I love you guys. I'll be in the boot camps. I'll still be a challenger. And I did. I did 21 day fix. I did all the prenatal workouts. I did the dance workouts. I still followed the meal plan. And I gained only 35 pounds during my pregnancy, which for the amount of donuts I ate was like miraculous. And I felt amazing when I had my daughter. So fast forward now, now I'm a hospital social worker. I'm working 11 hour days and I'm getting ready to have my daughter. And I'm thinking, I have no family in town. Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to like be a mom and work these insane hours? And my husband works like, I'm, am I going to put her in daycare at six weeks? So that's when real coaching for me was born. Um, that's when Sam and I kind of team, teamed up um, and decided we were going to go all in. Keep in mind, I, I was all in, but I, I wasn't really all in until we went to summit. Um, if you guys aren't going to summit, change your mind. You need to be at Summit. It is literally the coolest event ever. Um, on top of the fact that like all the tears, and I'm not a crier, Sam's a crier, right? I'm not, I'm not a crier. Every event, crying. So much crying, it's embarrassing. I wear a waterproof mascara, put it in your bag. 
a requirement. So we go to Summit and we are like, afterward, we're just like so jazzed. We're like, we need to help people. This needs to happen. And that was pretty much when I went all in. Um, I'm somebody who, for me, it wasn't about, like Sam said, it's about the choice, but it also is about proving that I could. Um, I got to the point, you know, I, I'd been at Diamond, felt like I couldn't do anything. Um, Brigitte was like, hey guys, I have this Diamond Push Group. You have two days to get ready for it, to qualify for one star, and you're literally gonna go up until the day of qualification. Like, the end of the year, and I call Sam, and I'm like, Sam, in tears, I need this. I need to be one star. I need to prove to myself that I can do this. I need to prove to myself that this business is real. And keeping it totally honest, guys, my husband is not the biggest fan of this coaching gig. He's just not sure if it's real. So I had to prove to him and to myself that it is, that this can be a legit business, and that I can show up, and I can be the person that I say I want to be. So... We did. Sam and I boxed almost every day. There was plenty of tears. There was plenty of pump ups. Don't get in your head. I mean, get a success partner and have way too much fun with it. Um, but in six weeks, I went from paid Emerald to qualification on the day of one star, signed up three girls on my last day. Like that's how before going into qualification during the six weeks, it was like nail biter every single day. Um, Brigitte was amazing and helped us kind of. Like Sam said, we don't really have anyone to reach out to. Um, we, we've never gotten these like awesome trainings to like tell us how to do all these things. We're just figuring it out and, and praying. And that was one of the things at New Leader Conference that they really pressed upon us. Um, you know, you hear from Ashley Molside, who's like, my coach isn't building a business. You know, you hear from these coaches who are like, I decided I was going to be the leader. And they use this kind of, to me, it was like the best metaphor I'd ever heard. They're like, picture you're in a jungle and you can't see anything. So as the leader, as the one who's pushing for it first, you're the one chopping down all the trees, right? You're doing it first, and you're leading this path for your entire team to follow behind you. So you're doing it first. And I've never felt more like validated and recognized in being a leader in that moment than being like, that is exactly how it feels. And when you look back and you see your girls doing it with you, it's the coolest feeling I've ever experienced. So when we left that training, Sam and I were talking about like, what do you want to get out of this? And I was like, honestly, I want someone to tell me that, you know, eventually we're going to like have this aha moment and it's going to make all this sense, you know, like, cause a lot of times we feel like we're blind, deaf, we're roaming around in a room, hoping we figure it out. And I can truly say when I left there, not only did I feel like any excuse I'd ever made because there are plenty, you know, not being supported, not having enough time being too tired, whatever the reasons were, are excuses. They are truly just that. And the only thing that is affecting us being successful is us. So in regards to, you know, Sam and I wanted to talk a little bit about the tangible things. And what she said about us getting upper level trainings was super accurate. Um, we wanted that. You know, we, we don't have, um, you know, a a Daniel and a Tony who's like, hey, you're my personal sponsor's coach. Let me put you in this group. We have amazing trainings. But Sam and I, especially when we first started, before we reached out to Regina, we're like, we literally don't know what we're doing in any way, shape, or form. So getting to sit there and hear from these coaches who have made like these amazing leaps in their business. These are people who like have been in the top 10 for years. You know, you always hear, oh, well, if you didn't get in early, you can't be successful. These aren't people who, who were already, you know, 15 star and they're just hanging there. These are people who push from one star paid rank to 10 star to 15 star in a year. These are people who had to work on their mindset, who've overcome so many things. And so when they're talking to you and they're like, this is how I get my coaches hyped, I'm like taking notes. Half of them I probably don't even, I can't even read because I was like so hyped on life. But one of the biggest things that Sam was saying is those upper level trainings. So some of the things that we had never learned about, and I know this sounds maybe ridiculous if you're a higher level coach, is like that Beachbody has quarters. So until we had gone into qualification, I had never once thought about the fact that we had quarters, that our business is built in three month increments, that when we're trying to be successful in this business, there are quarterly bonuses. There are things that happen every three months that are super amazing that you should be hyped about every three months. And I had never thought about that. I had never thought about game planning for each quarter. 
getting your coaches excited about what's coming up for them, getting them prepared, truly taking advantage of launches. Sam and I always joke, like I was the anti-launch person. I literally was like, no, I'm doing the program I want to do. I'm not getting on a launch. T20 guys is like my worst nightmare. If you had asked me to do a launch a year ago with a program I, like T20, I would have been like, it's never going to happen. And I have never been so excited that I did a program that I never thought I would enjoy until I got hyped about this launch. But the difference was I would have never even thought about it and I would have never gotten my girls hyped on it unless I had gotten into a different mindset, being that leader, chopping down those trees. You have to do it first. You have to show them that somebody is there and that you're there to help them. So when they're talking about setting your team up for quarters, when they're talking about, okay, this is how we break it down. These are some tips and tricks to get your coaches ready. You're going to send them emails before the launch happens in your back office. It's going to take you five minutes and people are going to jump on fruit punch energized like you've never seen. Again, never even thought to send out emails about launches, like little things like that, where you're so in what you're doing. You're so in the everyday steps of it, which you should be. But the reality is, this is a business. A lot of times, like Brigitte always talks about this. She's like, I was a strategy person. I have no idea about strategy. As a personality person, strategy to me is not something that I've ever like gotten in my head. I'm that person where I'm like, we're doing the next goal, and then when that's done, we'll move to the next one. When in reality, if you're going to be the leader, you have to show them these, this is what it is. So whether you're an orphan coach like we are, or you have an amazing upline, it's the same amount of work to get to New Leader Conference for every single person there. And I sat there with women who did the exact same work with me with completely different coaches, and we all sat there and thought, the only person who's holding us back from our success is us. And that was it. And that was the, the, the second part of this training or this New Leader Conference that was like game changer for me. I had never sat in a room I mean, there's always this like, I need to believe in myself. I know that. Everyone tells you, you know, it's all mental. Do your PD, la, 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 la. And you hear it left and right to the point where you almost don't believe it's real. Um, at least I'll speak for myself. I, Sam's like the ultimate PD queen. I have a list like this long that says all the PD I'm supposed to read. And probably the first six months of coaching, I didn't read one of her books. Not one. And she like, is always like, did you PD today? Did you? And I'm like, never. So the fact that now going there and I'm sitting there and all these coaches are talking about this business is not hard. The work is not hard. Doing a workout and drinking your shake for yourself is not hard. Doing a post that takes five minutes on social media is not hard. The actual work is not hard, but it is hard work. And the biggest part about that, our biggest weakness is ourselves. The belief that we are worthy of being at New Leader Conference. The belief that we are able to chop down those trees first and make way for our team. And the fact that we need to believe in ourselves that we can show up and we will reach those goals. Maybe not the first time around, maybe not the second time around, whatever. Regardless, that you will be there. And believing that belief into yourself and into your team. And that was something that like all the tears, guys. because. I'll, I'll speak for myself. I'm somebody who I'm stubborn, but that doesn't mean I'm always believing it. I'm like, I'm going to do this, but that doesn't mean along the way that the whole time I'm like, you can do this. There's that little voice in my head saying in that six week period of qualification, you must believe that little voice <laughs> was there every single day, all day. There was moments of complete breakdown. And the hardest part is believing in yourself. It's really not the work itself. It's believing that it's worth it to get up at 4.30 in the morning. Believing that it is worth it to show up for team calls, to sacrifice other things because you know that your goals are worth believing in yourself and that you will reach it one day. And that was the thing that, you know, Ashley Mall said, who are our new top coaches, she came on and gave this mic drop speech. I mean, and then we're in the elevator later and I was like, fangirling so hard. Like I was obsessed with her when she came to Super Saturday like three years ago before she was ever in top 10. And she made me cry there too, which again, it sounds like I cry a lot. I swear I don't. But she came on and was talking about that, that belief in yourself and how much it truly affects our abilities to be successful. And that was the moment for me. I could have not been at New Leader Conference at all for anything else. But to hear that that speech from somebody who 
was in the trenches, who sat at, you know, a six star rank, which for me, six star would be like, ah, but in her mind for years, who felt like she was not able to lead a team. And a lot of the things that she struggles with, I relate to in my story are things that I personally struggle with myself. So to be able to hear somebody on such an amazing stature, who of course, I'm like, so excited at the same time she's sitting across from me in the elevator and I'm thinking you're just a normal person and she's like I was in your seat two years ago and I'm thinking in two years that's it I can do that for two years it was just that belief in the fact that I could be that person that Sam and I could be top 10 that we can lead our teams to elite that we can be successful and that we're willing to do the work so that was for me was the big takeaways um, and I'll let Sam take away her part, but that to me was worth every single moment of New Leader Conference. If that is not on your vision board, it should definitely be on your vision board. I mean, I literally drove guys from the crack of dawn till I got there, didn't sleep, drove all the way home. Like it was the best decision of my life. Um, and one that I will, I will cherish forever because it did, it did, make me feel like I know who I am meant to be and that anybody could do this. You just have to be willing to believe in yourself. Okay, so she kind of just took a lot of what I was gonna say. <laughs> well, honestly, um, no, but I mean like, it's the, it, it's the same thing, different story, right? Like we all struggle, I mean, I believe, and I will make the generalization statement that the thing that's holding each of us back from our highest potential is doing um, the things we know to do, you know? And it was so, you know, you go to New Leader Conference and there's like an opening ceremony and, and I'll just tell a little bit of my story because I, I believe stories connect us. So there's people out there sitting who are like me and um, I am a confident person in regards to, I have told my story unapologetically from the very beginning. And I think it was just something I did growing up. I told my story. I told what I was going through. I was not someone who, it, like, it was a secret. I mean, it's not like I, like, stood on my roof and shouted it. But my friends knew, things knew, people knew. Um, you know, when my mom passed away in 2011, I was 21. You know, I shared that story. Um, I still share about it. And so I have always been felt, felt that I was a confident person because in my elements of my home, doing my workouts with my kids, working my job that I was good at as a special ed teacher, um, I was very confident. And so then I reached a, a point in my business this past year in 2018, where on our third move and third kid, like, we, um, you know, it was like, if I want to be home, you know, what was my teaching salary minus daycare for three kids, that number, can I make that number, then I can be home. Well, we figured out a way to do that. Um, I serve a little bit. Um, I'm like an on-call banquet server, but I'm home because of the income. And I started to feel something and it wasn't like, I, it, I can't explain it. Um, it was like in my belly and I, I felt this feeling and I kept saying to Brenna like I'm just feeling all these feels I don't really know what they are and like and I feel all the feels guys like I'm a cancer I don't even really believe in astrological signs but I just seem to be very point with cancer like I wear my emotions on my sleeve and I just I'm very in tune with like my body but I didn't have the answer to this which is not fun for me I don't like uncertainty so I had this like feeling and I didn't know what it was. So I am like, a, and I am like the PD queen. Like I have like, like a list and like with a hyperlink to Amazon to buy the am like to buy the audible with a like synopsis about what it is, because I just love personal development so much. Like I am obsessed because it has helped me so much overcome things in my life. And, and I'm so thankful to coaching because of that. Like, gosh, PD is everything is like do PD. Um, so I, Brene Brown is like my jam. So I'm like leaning into gratitude because I'm feeling uncomfortable. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to lean into gratitude. So I kept saying like, I'm so grateful to be home with my babies. I'm so grateful that I have this business. I'm doing a gratitude journal, I'm doing all the things. And I don't really know what's going on. So it continues all through qualification. Like I'm like, eh, I don't really get excited about something. And that is something that I'm working on. Um, I don't get excited about things until it 
I'm, I'm there and it's happening because in my world growing up, uh, things could change very quickly. So um, it's easier to not get excited than to feel disappointed. But that really robs us of a lot of joy in our life because excitement and the buildup to things is just as important. So, I mean, I'm not even excited for New Leader Conference. Like, I'm just like, okay, like I'm feeling these feels. And I walk in the first day and it's like, they have like the lights and it's like the thing and Carl's about to talk and it's really exciting. And I walked in and I said, this is so cool for all of these people, but they must have mistakenly sent me an invite because I don't belong here. Um, I don't, I'm not worthy of this. And that's, that felt really weird. Finally came up what was happening is that I was feeling unworthy and undeserving of the success that I've had. And I think it's because the lie I have told myself my whole life is that I do good in struggle. I do well in chaos. I'm the daughter of an alcoholic. You throw me in chaos and I come out ready to go. Like I am good. I am adaptable. That is my strength. So me being successful in a calm water, in calm ponds is uncomfortable for me. So it finally came up and I was like, looked at Brenna and I was like, I should not be here. And she was like, you, you need to knock that off. Like you, you worked to get here just like we all worked. And that's the awesome thing about this business is that you can look at anybody and their success. But, you know, in regards to like your ranking in the, in the company, your ranking is of the work you're doing right now. Not the work you did seven years ago, not the work you did eight years ago or two years ago or last year, the work your ranking in the company in the business is the work you're putting in right now so that's really cool um if you let it make you feel cool is that like you doesn't matter where you are yesterday it matters where you are today and you can just hustle for more and so then you know we're going through the weekend it's super fun and then we go up for lunch um the the last day before the final session and we're, Brenna and I are looking at each other and we're like, what are we looking to get out of this? Like, what are we trying to feel? And for me, it was, I want to believe, like, I, because mind you, the whole weekend they're telling you, um, okay, I just to check the time. they're telling you, they're so proud of you. And I'm like, yeah, you're okay. So I'm like, literally like, if they're saying they're proud of me, I'm like dodging the proud, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm like, oh, you're so proud of her and Brenna and you know Kim and everybody and you know the other Brenna because we had like two Brennas there and Aaron like everyone from the team and I'm like they did so good to be here <laughs> they are awesome and I'm having all this self-doubt and so then I'm looking at Brenna and I'm like I just want to feel like I did this that I can be proud of myself and uh, Ashley Moss that takes the stage <laughs> And this woman, like, you could feel her confidence from the back. Like, we were all the way in the back. And you could feel it. She took stage, and you could feel that she believed everything she said. And it's not that, like, other people, they didn't believe what they said, because, of course, they did. You know, Keisha spoke, and, of course, she was incredible. Um, you know, you're getting pumped up from all these people. Amy, um, I don't know their last names, and Allie, and all these amazing top 10 coaches this year. Um, and they were all awesome. But Ashley took this stage and said, all the things that I promise you, you are, you need to hear right now. And it's, it's what Brenna said. It's that you are the, uh, the only excuse and that you should be proud. But she told us the secret of her success. And I do believe it's everyone's success, but I think she talks about it a lot more than maybe like Melanie did. I would say Melanie Mitchell as top coach, like if someone, if, I had to guess what her secret was. I would be like, she's very organized and intentional with her time. Like that's very clear. Um, with Ashley, she, you know, she talks about her background from depression and not feeling as worthy. And I wouldn't have initially identified with that because I have always been confident. I've always told my story. I, I don't really, um, you know, that wasn't it. And, you know, she got up and she was like, my secret power is my mind. And I was like, okay, like she hooked me. And she was like, I take care of my mind more than anything. I tell myself, I believe myself before I believe it. And so she said all of the things. And she said, I was sitting right there. I believed when I was just a girl who couldn't get any working coaches. Because right now, you know, who, who on this call right now is like, where are the working coaches? Please, somebody catch the vision like me and come in and be like me and make successful and just do the things. And, you know, we all raised our hand because we're all like, where are the working coaches? And um, but 
the thing is, is that we have coaches on our team and we have coaches who want to work, but maybe are scared, just like we're scared because this business is so much more than like income and rank and all the things. I feel that this business is a complete mirror to you, like believing and trusting yourself and going in for it. So it's so much like a fitness journey, right? Like it's hard in the beginning and then it feels so good after, you know, you like you avoid it, but then you feel good after you do it. Like how many of us clean our entire house before we do our power hour? Because the fear of going all in and not making it is 10 times scarier than to just like not do it. So she, she goes up and she just says all the things of you are the one holding yourself back. You, if you master your mind, if you treat your mind first and foremost, that it is its job, like your job to take care of yourself, to believe in yourself, to say the things before you actually believe them, to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am successful. Not I'm going to be successful. I will be successful. I am successful. I am proud. So every day, if we get up and we look at ourselves in the mirror and we celebrate the things that we did as opposed to you know, listing all the things we didn't get to, it will completely change where we are now to next year. And I think that that's common for people, you know, not just in the business, but we, Brene Brown says it, I always quote Brene Brown, like, you know, the first thing we think of when we hit our head to go to bed in the morning is like all the things we didn't do. I didn't do enough. I didn't get to this. I didn't do this. And then when we raise our head in the morning is I didn't get enough sleep. I have to do, you know, it's like, we're always just like beating ourselves down. Instead, if we authentically work on ourselves, you know, the huge chunk of this business is, is us, you know, do your workout, drink your shakeology, you know, work on your nutrition, share the things you struggle with and how you're overcoming them. So it's like, whatever they are, like for me, it's finding right now, it's finding food that my kids will eat, finding food that I like to eat that's healthy. If I'm just sharing that, oh my gosh, you know, ultimate portion fix, bam, here's, bam, help for your, help for your life, help for your business. I'm struggling with what to do with my kids to remembering that, like, I mean, full disclosure, it's eight o'clock at night. And like, I haven't even showered because like, I don't always prioritize myself ahead. Like I got my workout in, that was really great, but I have three babies. It's hard. And like, here's me sharing how I'm overcoming this, how I'm remembering that I am worthy. I am important to do things first. This business is about doing you to the best of its ability, sharing your journey, and then being the girl that says, come with me. Let me help you. Let's do this together. And you can do that with this checklist. I always, this is like my new thing. I have this around every room. Every time I talk to my team, I'm like, this, this is it. You just have to believe in yourself to do the work, to check on, to check the things off the boxes. And then when it says set the timer for 10 minutes, set the timer for 10 minutes, do it and clock out and say, I am awesome that I did that. Not, oh, I probably should have done more because my goal is elite. And, you know, an elite coach would do 30 minutes and blah, blah, blah. This comparison, no do the things, check the boxes and move on. Because if we let it, and I say we, because we're in this together team, if we let it, this business can change our lives. And I used to think it will change, it will change my life when I get there. It will change my life, you know, like when I'm there, when I'm over there, where all the other successful people are standing, it will change my life. What I have realized that it has already changed my life and it's changing my life one step at a time. And we're all on the same path together of our lives being changed. It doesn't, we're not lined up by worth. Our worth is not lined up by rank or success club points or anything. It's our worth is, is, is so many things. And it's, we all are so a hundred percent worthy to be standing in the room with the successful people because we are successful too. So if new leader conference is not on your vision board, it is now, (laughs) um, and go for the room where, you know, the, just do the things, um, because you have the option to have them pay for your hotel room. If you do the things and we didn't even know we were doing the things and we both got rooms, we both got them paid for. And that's really great. That's so awesome. It's just like celebrate the wins that you got to go there. Celebrate the win that you go to Super Saturday. Share that, that you get to go to Summit, um, that you got a t-shirt for doing, for helping people. 
share all the good and focus on doing all the things and not focus on the things you didn't do. So anyways, believe in yourself. Literally one star is now that we've done it, we realize like we really not shoulda, woulda, coulda, because that's not productive. But like, if you want to get there, you can get there pretty quickly. Um, you just have to decide you're going to do it. And then you just do it again and you do it again. And ultimately you have to be on the moving train and then the, the working coaches will jump in with you, but you can't keep stopping the train and saying like, who's coming on the train with me? Like, who's coming? Um, like, are you going to come and work with me? No, like you have to be like on the moving train and you're like, you coming, jump on, you coming, jump on because that, that's how you get working coaches. It's not a, it's not a, I'm waiting for you. Let's do this together. It's I'm doing this no matter what. And I'm super excited if you want to come and do it with me. And that's what Brenna and I do is that I love Brenna more than anything. And she loves me more than anything. I'm <laughs> just kidding. But we do this together on individually, but side by side, and we hold each other accountable to our goals. But if for one reason, one or the other was like, I'm not doing this anymore, we wouldn't, we wouldn't stop. It would just be like, I miss you and I love you and know that you can always come back. So um, I hope that was what everyone was looking for. And, um, I think unless Brian has anything else, I have rambled enough. <laughs> okay, let's come over here. You guys, like that was perfect and amazing. And I'm like kicking, uh, I just, I'm kicking the team that there's like not more coaches on right now. And I'm going to be messaging all of my coaches and making sure that they get this recording. I hope everybody does as well, because I'm like, this is what so many people need to hear. Like, because I think so many coaches can relate. I know so many people who feel like, oh, I've been like here for so long. And like, what's the difference, you know, to get to one star and to make this, re to make this event. And I love hearing your takeaways, like cue all the tears and so thank you both ladies for getting on and sharing. And I am just so honored that you're a part of this team with me and that I get to do this with you. And like, I mean, Samantha, when you just said like, I thought like I'd see the results and the benefits of this business when I got to where all the successful people are, but I'm realizing I'm, I, I'm it's benefiting me now. I like that just hit me so hard because I do think when we're in the thick of this, we don't even realize how this is changing our lives and changing us for the better. And then you realize that like when you're old and gray and you look back at this time, you'll realize how much of this business has blessed your life in ways that you didn't even realize, you know? And so we get to be bold, you know, and sharing this with others because it will bless their lives as well. But Thank you all for being on. I know it's late for, for East Coast people. Um, I will share the recording in the team page and a huge thank you to Samantha and to Brenna for leading this call. I love everything that you had to say. So, so, so perfect. And I will see you guys online. Take care, guys.